Okay, Commission Chair. All right, let me, I'm gonna bring this meeting to order. Um, can I get a motion for, to approve the minutes from last month, please? Approve the minutes. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Can I get a second? Can I get a second? I'll second it. All right, Jenna. thanks. Thanks, Jenna. All right, all in favor indicate by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. Okay, motion passes to approve the minutes. Um, let's go on to number one. This is for the city of Pittsburgh. Do we have a representative from Crown Castle? Yeah, this is Terry Cummings. I also have a few other folks from Crown Castle here as well. Okay. Wes Payne, our manager of network construction, Michelle Cavey, our managing director of public sector fiber sales, and Bill Klein, our account executive, who works with the city of Pittsburgh as our primary point of contact. Okay. Well, I appreciate you all taking the time to be on here today. Um, let's discuss the percentages. So is Crown Castle an MBE? Uh, no? We are no. not, Crown Castle is not. We're a publicly traded company. And this okay. is a services contract for fiber optic connectivity and services for the city of Pittsburgh for 10 years. Okay. You want to review who you brought on to meet these goals? Sure thing. So what we did is we went through, we have a supply chain management process for diversity. We utilize that process uh, for this build. Although this is a $9 million services contract, uh, we really only have about $2 million of initial capital spend that we can provide to competitively bid contractors. We're going to know that a portion of that $2 million is already earmarked and has to go to areas where we can't competitively bid. Uh, the public the utilities, the utilities who own the public right-of-ways, the city, the municipality for permits and things along those lines. Um, so we went through the process and bid out multiple areas of services and came in with our percentages against uh, against this and those percentages are in laid out uh, in the group for uh, MBE, WB and uh, for uh, veteran owned. I'm going to let Wes Payne talk a little bit about this. Wes is our construction manager. He's the he's went, one who went out and got these contractors and he can talk to you about the process and who we're bringing on board and how we're confident that these numbers won't sway as we move through the project. Wes, if you want to jump in here, that would be fantastic. Yep, absolutely. Hi, I'm West Spain, um, manager of fiber construction. So when we went out to competitive bid, we had, um, we competitively sent this out to 44 different contractors. Um, the breakdown of the contractors were um, seven minority owned, one minority women owned, um, four minority veteran owned. Um, and then we have one woman owned business that is pending certification. Um, so, and then we had 24, uh, non, um, maybe we be, so that was kind of the breakdown of what we did. Um, we went out nationally, um, also locally. Um, so I am obviously based in Pittsburgh. So when we went out to bid, uh, we had approximately 15 touch points from the beginning of the bid, um, to the end of the bid, um, of bid responses. We had, um, a open call once a bid went out. We went out to um, make sure that, hey, this is what we're doing. You know, are you guys interested in doing it or not? Once a bid was um, come back in, um, we did not get the responses that we thought we would. So we actually went back out to the uh, potential uh, contractors and said, hey, what do we miss here? So in that process, it led us to here. Um, the big point here is every one of our vendors we have awarded to is a Pittsburgh based company. That's great. Um, That's yep. we really, we really um, strive to have that be the case. We understand that it can't always be, but the fact that you guys were able to accomplish that is makes all of the commissioners happy. I'm, I'm sure. So, okay. Commissioners, um, do, does anybody else have any questions for Wes or uh, Terry? Or anybody else on that team, I'm pretty happy with what I see here. 
I'm seeing head nods from my commissioners. You guys good? Okay, can I get a motion? I make a motion to approve this contract. Thanks, Dr. Hall. Can I get a second? I'll second. Wonderful. All in favor indicate by saying aye or raising your hand on the camera. Aye. Okay, does it, a pause and does it pass? Yes, that's good. I can't see everybody, you know that. Okay. I don't, yeah, I, I didn't see uh, Jenna, Jenna Kramer. So people- Yes, I, I vote to approve. Okay, thank um, you. Okay, great. All right, that this passes. Congratulations, guys. Good luck on your contract. Um, let's move on to the next one, please. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is number two. This is a sawmill run maintenance project for Domi. Um, let's look at the percentages here. 7% MBE. Oh, this is the, the WBE. Um, the prime is a WBE, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Any representation from Brensel Excavation on the line here? Any representation from Domi? Yes, this is Robert. McCall. Sorry, I had a. You had can you guys hear me okay? This... Yes, we can. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, this is Alicia Brunsell. I'm the, the president and owner of uh, Brunsell Excavation. We also, our DBA business name is Brex Enterprises. Okay, well, that's great. Um, we're really happy with your participation here, Your the numbers. Um, could you tell us? Just a little bit about how you met your MBE and then you actually got some um, veteran owned, which we don't really count, but we appreciate that you uh, reaching out and getting that participation on there. Yes, absolutely. So we'll be self-performing most of the work. So um, that would qualify for our WBE requirement. Um, we also reached out to a couple different MBEs utilizing the PAUCP website searching for some other contractors to get involved in some of the geotechnical. We mm -hmm. didn't really have any luck finding any contractors to, um, to meet those specific requirements. However, we have in the past on other contracts for um, the city, we have worked with an MBE, a CNC master cleaning and restoration. So they will be doing our hauling for us and that'll help us meet that um, MBE spend. And then uh, we will be utilizing a local company to be that is the WB and the veteran owned business um, urban. They will be doing a survey for us of all the all the site specific needs. So between the three of us, we will have the whole entire contract covered. This is I'm very pleased with this. This looks great. Does um, any do any of the commissioners have um, any questions or comments? No, you guys, I'm seeing head shaking. No, everybody's pretty happy. Okay, can I get a motion? I'll move to approve. Thank you, Jenny. Can I get a second? A second, Earl. Who was that, Earl? Earl, second. Okay, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 A pause, no, did it pass? Yes, we're good. Okay, this this contract's been approved. Good luck with everything. Thank you, Domi, for your efforts. Um, all right, let's move on to the next. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, this is O3 Occupied and Common Area Painting Authority wide. This is a Housing Authority. We got I, I saw Brandon on here. Um, anybody else? Okay, thank you. Bye. Sorry about that. I had a That's okay. Go ahead, Brandon. Hello. Good morning, every or afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, allowing me to present this. I believe the first one up on the agenda is um, the occupied painting um, and vacant or occupied or common area painting. Um, we do have some participation on this um, <clears throat> to try to increase. The opportunity we we went, went with uh, we actually split it this time to have a occupied and then a common area to try to get some more vendors involved. Um, JNS Handyman was actually the uh, 
lowest bidder for for both occupied and common area um and he is an mbe so he'll probably based off of the history of this project he'll probably get over 50 percent of the work because he he's been a vendor who's won the last few painting contracts um he does have a wbe with um i believe it is platinum i would say uh -huh. I don't have it backwards. Maybe you have Lady Carpenter listed in Platinum Group Services. Yes, Lady is his is his sub, um, so she'll get she gets seven percent of his portion, okay. and then he gets the other portion as the MBE. And then Higher Power Homes was the winner for uh, Occupied, and they have a sub of JNS, and their WBE sub is Platinum Group. And then okay. White Water Renovations was the second lowest bidder for um, common areas, and they do not have um, any participation. Okay, but overall, so I have a question. So, Lady Carpenter, she's getting seven percent portion of this work. Are you? Do you police that? Do you watch that to make sure that that's actually happening? Yes. So okay. we're now who unfortunately couldn't be, she was in training, so she's not on the call today. Um, every quarter she sends out letters to listed subs. So any of the subs that are on any of the plans that we, we bring to you, she mm -hmm. sends letters to them so they can verify their usage. And we track that on a quarterly basis because anything shorter than a quarter is not really like a good snapshot for us to make sure somebody's okay. being used or not. Um, yeah. And I believe that quarterly utilization report gets wrapped up in the report we send over to the mayor's office. I believe that does get provided to Chuck. So, yeah. so I believe we've been rolling with um, 29, 2018, I want to say. The, usually we have five years, so that would be 17. So 20, 2017 through 2021 is the rolling. And once those contracts expire, they fall off of that report. Um, and okay. we maintain that, that tracking. Okay, that was my uh, that was my only question. Um, commissioners, does anybody else have any questions for Brandon regarding this contract? No, I think it looks pretty good. I can't see everybody. Dr. Hall, you good? Yes. Okay, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve this contract. Can I get a second? I second, Andrea. Andrea seconds. All in favor, indicate by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. aye. Okay. Jenna, I can hear you. Okay, great. Thanks. Posna, we got a we got enough to approve. Yes, thank you. All right, this motion pass. This um, sorry, this project is approved. Move on. Okay, now we're getting to number four, which I have a lot to say about. Sure. Um. Uh, all right, I'm gonna, Brandon. If you don't mind, I'm gonna start. Sure. Okay. This, the way this was explained to me, and I do understand this completely because I do work with the housing authority. So I, I understand what, what this is about here, this um, janitorial services. So, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So the tenant council corporation is the prime, which is meaning, are you, are you giving this work to tenants in your locations at, at like a discount for their their rent type of thing no no uh, okay all right so well that's is, the way i understood it and yeah. i was like why was this even why is this even being brought to us um uh, I, don't know. I don't know i i just anything over the threshold we kind of kind of bring to you so so I know, I'll break but this if down. You, you know if you have zero participation this is going to be a 20-minute discussion that may right. probably shouldn't have been brought in front of us in the first place so okay i'll let you speak Go ahead. sure so the um the house all housing authorities according to the 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 cfr we can actually do procurements for resident-owned businesses and their and their resident-owned business is defined as a as a resident a low-income public house resident that owns a business mm -hmm. um, that is not it's not open to somebody who is a voucher holder like a hcv voucher is not a resident of a housing authority so tcc1 is a resident owned cleaning company and i believe there is 
one other firm that is a resident owned. So, so it's really, it's not just restricted to just housing authority residents. It could be Allegheny County residents who own a business. It could be Westmoreland County housing authority residents that own a business, but it's, it's, this firm is a section three business mm -hmm. and the section three act they're trying to get some of the funding that we spend on goods and services kind of directed back to the residents. And this is a resident owned business that employs other residents. Um, they don't get a discount on their rent. Um, this is, they, they are a company that has, you know, they have a, a W9, they are a section three certified company. Um, it is a, owned by a minority female. She just does not want to get certified as an mm -hmm. MBE or a WBE, but she is a Section 3 certified business. Okay. Um, that's why there is a little bit less restriction because of the definition of what it means to be a resident, to be in the business, to have a resident-owned business. Okay. Well, this is the first time this has popped up since I've been on this commission. Um, I just, my gut feeling about it when it was presented to me uh, when Chuck and I spoke earlier, I do not believe that this should have been brought to the AORC. This okay. is an internal, now I, that's just my opinion. I want to hear from the rest of the commissioners. I mean, if you guys have a process that is helping your, you know, residents, if this is all an internal process that has already been established and it's going to make your percentages look like zero only because of logistics. It's not actually zero. Um, I just don't feel, I don't know. You guys, what do you think? Dr. Hall, I'm curious to your opinion. Jenny, you, I saw you to unmute yourself. I'm just curious. I know it's not like a traditional way that someone would qualify for a waiver, but is this something that could have just had a waiver? Well, regard it. I don't even think it should have even had to come in front of us. Like, no, I, I, I would agree with that. Okay. Well, I, I think Chuck and I talked about that waiver and uh, because I, I had asked too, I said, do you think we need to see this? And uh, so I'm, I mean, I'm totally understanding of this whole housing authority and this service here, having someone who grew up in the housing authority system, so to speak. Uh, so it's not new, but um, I, you mentioned like a third party, um, what did you say, Brandon? So a, third a section company. three, are you guys yeah, familiar section with three. section three is? No, I'm I, not. I know what section three is, Okay. yeah. So it's, it's, I'll just be a, uh, give it a broad here. Um, um, so it's based off of a HUD act of 1968. <clears throat> Section three is a certification that you can get that's purely based on income level. Um, yeah. Whereas this, you know, the, the EORC is based off of a, a certified, a, a minority or a female. Section three is purely income based. It, it's, it's basically designed to get housing authorities who spend, you know, all the HUD's money incorporate it back into low income individuals. So you could be yeah. a section three certified company by, um, and, and, and I think in Pittsburgh, uh, the Riverside, you know, Juan and Judy over at Riverside, they're the ones that do the certifications for section three businesses. Yes. Um, and you can either be owned by a low income individual or a resident of, of a housing authority. Uh, over 51% of your employees can be considered uh, low low income and it's regardless of race or, or gender. Yeah. Right. It's purely an income. So, so she's a section three certified business as a low income, in, as a, as a business owned by a low income individual. And coincidentally, she also has, I believe several low income employees that do the cleaning services. And she, I believe it's only at um, a couple of locations and it happens to be the one that she lives at too. Um, at the uh, Northview, and she also cleans our dock center for the for the development opportunity. So yeah, my only question was with this: well, who's making money, right? So we don't have we have no. Well, they're getting MBA. paid that money. They're getting right. paid. That's that's three years. So if you take yeah. the hundred and five divided by three, that's what she's getting paid a year, and she's she's putting that money back into the community by yeah. hiring low low income 
um, you know, low income workers. So here's my thing. Okay. By the optics of this, just by you having a zero percentage on here, this puts us in a in a bad position because if we go ahead and approve it, it it's it looks like we didn't do our jobs, our fulfill our responsibilities. When in reality, this is supporting the communities. This is supporting minorities and women-owned businesses. And it's just because of the optics, it looks like it's not. Does that make sense to all of so, you? So if they held off, right? And I mean, obviously zero is going to be there if we wait another month or not. But is there would a waiver or what would help this? Because it is helping the community, but I agree, like it says zero, like no MBE, no WB. So how it can we- never been, It should have never um, been brought in front of us. I okay. feel like anything that's gonna be tenant council, I mean, I, just just leave it off. Okay. And I, is this you guys all agree with that because I can't just make that decision on my own, but that's the way I strongly feel about it. Let me let me ask Brandon. Was this something that had to go out for a bid? Yes, this was an actual IFP process. So we still have to follow the rules of, of the full bidding process. Okay. But what we're able to do is we're able to limit it to only resident-owned businesses. But it's still any resident-owned business is eligible to bid and win this. She just happens to be the lowest bidding resident-owned business for this for this procurement. So that does seem like it's an internal process. It's internal. Yeah. Okay. Because it's resident and it's and you just make it three. external by bringing it to us. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a section three, which isn't uh, yeah. our responsibility. Just knowing that what section three is. Yes. So that's not for us. Okay. And that in section three is was put in place to support um, low income communities. Um, it, it's 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 all good work. I have no issue with this. But see, the issue is if we approve it at 0%, then it looks like we didn't do our job, which I'm going to suggest, I'm going to recommend that we do anyway, since we're going to hopefully never have to go have this in front of us again. Make sense? The community is still making out. So that's the whole idea. So that's the good thing. It just doesn't look good for us. Opt optically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on paper. So if we, if we on know paper, it doesn't look good. Okay. Could we potentially table it? Yeah, but why should we keep these people from doing their work and getting? Well, paid? no, I mean, I wonder. Could we? Could it be tabled with kind of the asterisks that it could go ahead to? So that was my question. For so I, 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 the numbers don't look like it'll change, but my, that was my thought. Like, how can we? Or what can we do as a commission? Or is there nothing we can do? Because the numbers are going to say zero based on. Are you, are you guys the allowed to vote? Too? I mean, we, we in my opinion, this is none of our business. This okay. is not this. That's my opinion. This is none of our business. This was internal for the housing authority. It would be different if they were if it was posted in the courier. And do you know any like? It it was it was it was advertised. You only and, put yeah. it out to you only put it out for residential companies, correct? Correct, but we still did. We still followed all the rules, so it was in the Post Gazette, it was in the Courier. We sent it over to the African American Chamber of Commerce, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, up to um, oh, what is her name at uh, in in IUP? Um, I can't think of her name. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Um, we, I mean, we followed every procedural law and regulation for this we just defined a resident owned business as somebody who is a resident of a housing authority so okay so the, the last the last contract that we looked at the j and j j and s handyman j and s handyman if they if they were able to do janitorial services would they have been able to bid on this I don't believe he is a resident of the housing authority. He would have been you just, eligible. You just to made bid, my point. You but he just wouldn't made have been responsible. Point. You just made my point. Okay. Chuck, can you do a waiver on this? Oh, Jesus. If the housing authority requests a waiver, um, I would bring it to you guys, but I think a waiver would be okay for this since it's internal and it's less than 
50,000 a year. But that's up to you guys if you want me to pursue the waiver. I would rather just approve it and never have something like this brought in front of us again. Okay, I can, I can do that. I, I can make sure that we don't, if I'll it's- talk, if You it's know a, what, I'm gonna talk to Kim. I'm gonna talk okay. to Kim about it. Okay. So this, the uh, the woman owned business that got this contract, she's she has no interest of being certified because if she was certified, then this would make this a lot easier. That is correct. We, when we spoke to her, Renelda spoke to her. She was not in, um, she did not indicate a desire to, uh, to do any more paperwork to get, to get certified anything other than section three. Yeah. And that becomes a problem for us though, because we want people, you know, certified. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, I mean, we could well, always, I guess if, if you wanted to, I mean, you're not, you're not denying it. Right. And no, um, I want it to be approved, but I, I'm not, I'm one vote. So how about we take a vote on it and see where we're at? All right. Can I get a motion? So moved. This is Monica. Okay. Oh. Can I get a second? Second. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hall. All in favor by approving this? Aye. Aye, Aye. Earl. Aye. Okay. Aye, Jenna. Thank you. All right, so it it's approved. I will talk to Kim. Brandon, do you understand the points that I'm making and what where I'm coming from? I do, I do. I, so I was trying to think of another way. I don't, because it's in our policy to take this stuff to you. I don't, don't have to well, then figure I out think what else we can do, yeah. Well, I feel like if it's a tenant council or a resident contract where you're only going to accept um, bids from resident businesses, then it should qualify for a waiver. Okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. You guys good? All right. All right. All right. Do we, Thank do you, we Brandon. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, all the guests that are on the line. Yeah, I am. I am. What? We're moving on to ITQ? Yeah, there's a quick update on ITQs. Okay. So if these don't affect you guys, anybody on the, on the call, on the Zoom call can exit off. And we appreciate you taking the time. We truly do. Okay. Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for joining. A quick update on the ITQ work orders. We've had two. Uh, one is uh, the project management assistance for uh, BRT utility coordination, and this is uh, the prime is CDR. Uh, this is um, uh, the project cost is about thirty eight thousand, and it's a domi project. It doesn't have any subs. The other one is uh, on call management services. Uh, this is basically to provide personnel to domi. Uh, and uh, this is the prime is Sci consulting and the project cost is 98,000 over 98,000. It doesn't have any subs again, mm -hmm. but uh, they are uh, providing just personnel uh, supply to the Domi offices. And that's it from me. Okay. Do we have to and, and I have one okay. and I have one question. Oh, so make a motion for that first. I'm sorry. Can I get a motion? I make a motion to approve. Can I get a second? A second, Andrea. Thanks. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thanks. Thank you guys. I just have one question before you guys leave. Um, I want to move the September meeting to September 23rd because yeah. September 16th is a holiday. Right. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Is yes. that okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, that's good? Yes, I prefer yes. to not have it fall on a holiday. Sure. And that'll give the... Um, 
the people an extra week to get their plans in order too. So that'll be great. Um, that's all I have, uh, commissioners. Okay. All right. Anybody else have anything they want to bring up? No. Um, guys, I'd really prefer that you keep your camera on during this meeting. It's easier for us to just see the hands wave. This the, to to for a pause to try to determine who said I is that's that's a strain on her that she, she shouldn't have to um, endure. So I, I apologize that I can't be on camera this week. I'm always on my computer, but today I'm on my phone. Uh -huh. So I, I wanted to join versus not join. And okay, that, that's yeah. my scenario. I was trying to chat you, but there's no chat function available to allow that. Okay. Listen, I'm not, I'm not shaming anybody. That's not, I'm just explaining why I feel like it's important. Um, I you agree. Know, I, I understand that there's times where you, you know, maybe you're driving. I appreciate you even getting on and voting and listening while you're driving. I, that's, you know, I don't expect you to have your camera on and I want you to look at the road and your safety is more important. <laughs> so, um, but if you can, if you can just be conscious of that. If it's, it's easier to see the hands raised if the camera's on and it's just easier for a pause now. Okay. Um, so if there, if there's a way that you can be camera, camera on next month, I'd appreciate it. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to talk about? Um,